Hello, my soccer universe. I literally don't know what to say anymore. Yesterday was crazy. Today topped that. Easily topped that. I cannot begin to say where, how crazy this day was. And it was in both groups. But what happened in group E is just, I had I almost never seen anything like it. With the teeny tiny exception that I think the Costa Rica, it was Group D at the 2014 World Cup where England and Italy went out. We almost had that happening today. With both, for two minutes, both Spain and Germany were gone. Both Spain and Germany were gone. And to make it even better is that after 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 minutes um, of both games, I actually went down the kitchen because my wife was still working there. And, you know, I said, you know, I guess the games will be really boring because at, at that time, both uh, Spain and Germany were leading and fairly in control of their games. I said, you know, I'm going to quickly help you to get down there. They, they, they can also rest. <laughs> Famous last words. Uh, I think whatever happened after that, I mean, Costa Rica could have already, or, already scored uh, before then, but whatever happened after the half, it just boggles the mind. It really boggles the mind. And this Japan team did the same thing to Spain that they did to Germany. This is a Japan team that won against Germany, that won against... <laughs> Spain and loses to Costa Rica and Costa Rica that has been beat by seven goals by Spain that wins with one shot a goal against um, against uh, Japan and to be honest they had only one chance and scored two goals from that and that chance was not even the one that, that, that led to, to, to the goals okay maybe the one won yeah uh, he brought himself in a good position but it was Neuer's fault Germany turned it around, but you can clearly say that Germany completely messed this up in their opener, and I still cannot, I still cannot believe that Germany is doing in Italy. Germany and Italy won their World Cups and then got twice eliminated in the group stage. You hear it first: Germany is not qualifying for the next World Cup. Although that would be even a more major miracle because the World Cup is getting expanded. And I have been railing against uh, Dia teams at this World Cup, but honestly, uh, if you give me that, I actually, I can sign up, make it more. <laughs> make it more. And now we have not even talked about Group F, where if <laughs> Lukaku makes that one shot that goes in with Croatia and Morocco, dead even. Dead even. Even on goals, even, even on points, even on goals, even on yellow cards. There would have been a draw. I mean, the chaos factor there. And uh, the chances that Belgium were missing. That was a thoroughly enthralling game. And then the big one for Canada. That actually could have sent the Morocco game to 2-2. I mean, the ball was almost behind the line. And that was another thing that in Japan game. <sighs> My mind goes boom. My mind absolutely goes boom. I'm probably forgetting half the facts in here because it was just an amazing day. A day this was, I mean, yeah, you could not take your eyes off it. It was that crazy. It was really hard to follow on two screens because you didn't know where to look in both cases. And I usually, I'm, I'm actually quite, 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 quite good, good following two screens. But it was all happening at the same time. And, you know, I had to watch on two different live streams, uh, which has the added uh, complexion that, you know, they're not all in sync. So I had one point that saying that Japan leads when Japan had not even scored. Uh, 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 Japan had the equalizer when Japan hadn't even scored there. So I had to stop here to get this even. But, you know, minor things. Absolute madness. Absolute madness.
I cannot tell you. I, I think it's probably best if we just uh, talk a teeny bit about the games. I mean, I gave you the rundown more or less already. Um, Croatia against Belgium ends with a nil-nil. And I said in the one-minute video already, I think in both cases, Belgium, uh, Croatia really starts out well. This is a Croatia team that uh, I think that midfield is one of the best in the entire tournament. Uh, that you really have to beat. Croatia is not a team that goes down easily and you know Perisic almost could have scored their fastest goal in World Cup history uh, if he would have put that shot, shot, shot in after nine seconds. And I have to say that it's Croatia-Belgium game. They really went when each other. There was, 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 wasn't a goal. was more or less a freak uh, thing because Belgium they had pretty, uh, two pretty big chances with three Mertens. But it was actually, I felt that Croatia was more in the game. But then in the second half, again, Croatia had the early chances. But Belgium had Lukaku in there. And they had this linchpin. And Lukaku, he is not in full fitness. And I think the one... <laughs> I don't want to say he was his clumsy himself, but the, Lukaku has this ability to just be... Uh, he can be completely devastating, but he can be also so super clumsy. Remember the own goal that won the Europa League final? Remember when he had it at his own player, when Inter could have gone through against Schachter? He, he gets the rebound on a shot, I think it was around the 60th minute, where he just... Uh, it was a well take taken shot and probably was the only angle, and he hits the inside of, 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 the, of the post, and he has two really big chances that he just has to make, especially the one in the last, very, very last minute. Uh, he has one where he probably would have made it, where Guardiol makes an, a monster tackle, but Belgium doesn't find the goal, and because Morocco are winning against Canada, I'm more on that game in just a little bit. Belgium are out and Croatia are on and I think we have not heard the last thing about this Croatian team. I really think this Croatian team uh, has, uh, has, has another surprise in them. They are too solid. And I think this Modric guy and Kovacic and Perisic and uh, Brozovic, there is so much quality in there. We have not heard the last of these guys. Absolutely certain. The question is, of course, now is that golden generation over? Um, and you know, if, if that Group E evening would have gone, I probably would have made something on the title, uh, Golden Generation, uh, bye bye. Um, it really seems like it, the Belgium has run its course. I'm not saying that they uh, they will never, they will not do a good run in the next Euros, where they actually have a tough qualifying group with Austria and Sweden in there. But. Um, I think they need they need a reboot and a rethink. They have good players come come, come come coming after, but I think the whole Belgian defense needs a rejig definitely. Uh, and I think the uh, at least Eden Azar needs to come out. So I, I'm not saying it's all completely over, but I think this particular generation is over. That we can that, that, that uh, can definitely say, and. They probably could have made the World Cup final in 2018. It was really close against France. That was their shining moment. And given the size of Belgium as a country, I gotta say, I mean, uh, them getting in the World Cup a third place finish is, I think, I mean, I really don't, I really don't, don't, don't see why people want them to win necessary title to validate this generation. This is a generation that has done for Belgium more than um, almost any other previous generation. Uh, yes, we had a generation that, that reached a Euro final, but that was when the Euros were played with eight teams. So uh, in that sense, it didn't fall their way. They were basically uh, always a little bit, either they didn't have a coach or they had a bad draw or they ran into a team that was just better. That's it. Canada Morocco was also I mean uh, the first cup Ziyech was also one of those absolutely crazy ones where a back pass to the goalie is mishandled and Ziyech then from far out makes it one nil. Ziyech would not have did not play in the Fcon for instance. Uh, then Hakimi assists in a zero to make it two nil and you, uh, stadium rocking everyone for Morocco. It's all going really 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 well. And I'm really, really annoyed that there are no Moroccan jerseys available at this moment because I really would like to have another one than just the green one that I have there. I would like to have a red or a white one. So, Aguerd, 
deflects a shot and makes an own goal, it's 1-2. Then Eneziri scores one that is called off for offside. I think it was the correct call, but it's rather tight. And then the big one where um, uh, <laughs> uh, Hutchinson makes a header that hits the inside of the bar. It goes down. Half the ball is over the line, but half of the ball is not. He jumps up again just in front of the bind. There's another a Canadian having a free... I mean, absolutely free in front of goal of a half a meter away. It, uh, the ball is just so much and he can, cannot get it uh, to press it down. It, it was just odd. And that also could have done quite some to this group. So, yeah. Madness, madness, madness. Uh, speaking of, let's go to Japan against... Um, uh, Spain. I really thought that Japan had done everything to mess themselves up with the loss to South Korea. Uh, to <laughs> Costa Rica, South Korea. To Costa Rica. I really thought that was that. Nope. Nope. Morata gives Spain even early, early through us, Billy Quetta. In Spain, they're typically selves controlling, controlling, without maybe uh, generating a tons of chances. Uh, but you could already see that, Sp uh, that Japan had, uh, had a few attacking patterns in, in there, but uh, they couldn't get past, uh, they, they couldn't uh, give Spain trouble. However, they came out of the half and pressed suddenly Spain really, 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 really high. And that's how the first goal came, where through the high half press, they gained the ball back and Don can pull it again and uh, makes the second goal at the World Cup. And then probably one of the most contentious decisions at the World Cup uh, so, so, so far, where Mitoma saves the ball that was just going out. And um, De Bruyne, I mean, Lukaku missed it, but uh, De Bruyne ball was out already. But uh, Mitoma just gets in, and this must have been by a millimeter still in. You see, when you see the, uh, the picture, the camera, I mean, the angle is not uh, the perfect one. Um... But I know that the ball has enough sensors to tell where the position is. But it really seems that it has been out. Probably not. I thought, yeah, maybe there, it's geometrically kind of, I see it possible. I would like to have seen the picture. I think there we could do, really do better. And then Tanaka can pull it in. And uh, Japan had turned a game on its head, like against Germany, with it, with two very quick goals. And uh, Spain were reeling at this point, because now Spain was really vulnerable. Japan were already through with only the 1-1, one -one because Germany at the point had only a 1-0 lead. And that was enough for Japan. I mean, if soon as uh, Germany scored another one, then Germany would, would, would have gone through. At that point, I squarely expected that Spain could, could not be safe would go on and at one point Costa Rica was ahead at which point and Spain was out uh, however thanks to Germany Spain was still in and I thought because they were in such a danger of gaining eliminated they, they will press forward but actually there was not much coming from Spain they had like a double chance here or there but there was not the one where I said this, this, this was not a big equalizing chance and I have a feeling and I said this in the, in the preview, the finishing second in this group is not a disadvantage because you're avoiding a Brazil in the quarterfinals. I also think playing Croatia ahead of Morocco, or, 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 or playing Croatia is not as pleasant as playing Morocco. I really think so, that this was in their minds. That they think yeah, Morocco was the freak result there. Um, and then you eliminate an addition uh, rival in Germany. I, you know, I really think that Spain played for the win. They went out at the beginning, they went for the win. But there was no real need because as soon as Germany turned the game around rather quickly again, there was no real need for Spain to go all out on attack. Thoughts. Just thoughts. As for the German Germany game, I mean, uh, what Musiala missed in that game was uh, Lukaku like. Uh, I think Germany hit the post at least twice, if not three times. Gnabry gives them an early lead and then they're missing chance after chance. However, they gave one up to um, Fuller, who scored the win against uh, Japan, uh, who this time skies it. And then in, in, in such a pressing video, Tejeda suddenly makes it 1-1 uh, because Neuer cannot control the ball. And then Neuer more or less scores an own goal uh, just a few, uh, just 12 minutes later. An absolute freak of a goal. 
And I even thought there was a, maybe some uh, offside in there, but there was a chance at this point Japan and Costa Rica were through. Uh, well, Harvard, who had come on just to just work, gets an equal, gets even a go ahead, Golden Fulcock makes another one. And that actually would have, could have been crucial because if Germany has a 2 0 lead, Japan cannot afford a draw. So Japan really had to hang, hang on. Uh, but in the seven minutes stoppage time, I think Japan was never in danger. And Germany are out for the second time in, in, in a row ahead of a Euros at home. Not happy. And I have a feeling similar to Denmark, and I don't, I, I don't know if you really, uh, if you realize this. Ever since Germany did this gesture in the team picture, there are no team pictures more. FIFA is forbidding team pictures. I mean, that's the absolute, uh, that's the craziest thing ever. So uh, it doesn't stop. This this World Cup is absolutely mad. It's absolutely mad. Uh, I think a German commentator even said, and I, I, I want to give it this nice um, tidbit, uh, that, you know, um, the, the World Cup is a circus, but unlike the circus, the clown is sitting up in the stands, meaning Gianni Infantino. Just saying. I think after all that, and, you know, I know I'm probably somewhat incoherent, we look at the final standings. Uh, on top right, we have the two. Japan finished the group winners ahead of Spain. No one would have thought that. I really thought that Spain has no other chance but to finish first. But, you know, as I said, finishing second is not so bad because if you look at the other group, Morocco, Croatia, we already talked about it. Uh, Spain still heavily favored. Germany finished only third uh, place. They would have needed a major swinging goal if the difference. They were basically five goals short. Was not going to happen. Uh, I actually, when the Japan game was over, I actually thought it would have been fun. There were three minutes left in the Germany game if Germany had led in three goals for Costa Rica. And Costa Rica would have moved on. Um, in the projected standings, you know, um, no, we know now a little bit, uh, we have another two groups uh, finished and we see that tomorrow's groups are kind of So let's go straight to the um, projected bracket, which now that three looks rather wide open and a lot more balanced than we could have expected. Um, yes, there's an airlines Argentina matchup, but there's also United States and Australia in there, so we would expect that. Then um, Croatia, Brazil, I think if Brazil finish first and they can do it, yes, there would be semi-final with Argentina, but I think you would think that Brazil would go on over uh, Croatia, so Brazil also have a rather steady, uh, very comparable ways. Then, I mean, the big one is England, Senegal, France, Poland, especially France, England. Um, I think Senegal could hurt England, but I think England has enough firepower to get through. And then it would be the, the lower bracket. And I'm assuming now everything ends as it's supposed to end. I mean, yes, we could get Brazil against Portugal, potentially. Um, but, you know, if Spain and Portugal there, yeah, we, uh, Spain, Portugal quarterfinal would be great. Don't understand Morocco, though. Uh, really, really urge you to not underestimate uh, Morocco. But you know, uh, while we still have to nominate two best teams up there, um, I actually think if we see the four teams in the quarterfinals, those are probably the four best teams left in the comp competition, whether they won the group or not. And despite the recent showings, and so yeah, uh, it will be interesting for sure. Overall favorites basically confirm what I said. We have the top four teams, and I really think that it was better for Spain to finish second in this group because now they actually have improved there, and it's really, really weird to see. Uh, still, Brazil the overwhelming favorite, and we have still quite a few teams coming in and out. But you know, that was to be expected. Tomorrow we finish the last two groups. The first one is, of course, the you know Ghana, Ur Uruguay, the Grudgement, and South Korea, Portugal. Uh, also, there is still everything possible, and then Serbia, Swiss, Switzerland, the Grudgement of the entire World Cup, I, I would argue, so far. Um, Cameron, Brazil should be only, yeah, Brazil should win that easily. So yeah, longer video, but it was just too crazy. Just too crazy. Let me know your thoughts in the video below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so to get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.